Okay, lesson 5-4, using strategies to multiply. We are not actually learning anything new today. We are reviewing all of the different strategies that we can use if we are stuck and we have not uh, memorized that multiplication fact yet. Okay, so the first one here is going to start out with 4 times 9. Now again, these are strategies we would use if we do not know how to, how to find that number, you know, with our memorization. Or for example, with the nines, we have our nines trick, right? So we have four times nine. We know the first number is one less than this, so that's a three, and three plus six is nine. So if we know our nine strategies, there's no reason to use the distributive property or a bar diagram to figure out nine times four. But if you forget how to use the nine strategies and you're looking at four times nine and thinking, I do not know how to figure that out, um, then let's look at some ways and we'll use a problem that we know, the four times nine, and let's look at that and see some ways to break it down and add it up using the distributive property. Remember, break it down, add it up. So we have the distributive property, okay? We have four times nine. They want us to break down the nine, so the four is going to stay the same, okay? So we're gonna break this nine into five and four, okay? And remember how we, we do that, we do four times five plus four times four. So our four stayed the same, and then we broke down the nine into five and four, right? So four times four, is 16 and 5 times 4 is 20 and then we're going to add and here here's our four groups of four and four groups of five just to show it to us then we're going to add 20 plus 16 and that equals 36 so 4 times 9 is 36 again if we know the nines trick we just we just write 36 and we're done Using the distributive property or any strategy to find a, a product or a multiplication problem is only to be used when you don't already automatically or already know it. It's kind of like looking a word up in the dictionary that you already know how to spell. Like if, if you know how to spell it, write it down, be done, and move on. If you know the product, write it down and move on. But if you're stuck, these are great strategies to help you get to that answer. Okay, you can draw a bar diagram to show multiplication. So this bar diagram, we're using the same multiplication problem, nine times four. So we have nine groups of four, okay? So we can skip count by four. We have nine groups of four. We can skip count by four. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. We don't really need the 40 because that's the 10th, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So four times nine is 36. Okay, let's look at the bottom. Find seven times five, two different ways. So skip count to complete the bar diagram. Okay, so here's a bar diagram. We have seven groups of five. And we're gonna put our, oops, I forgot to put my big answer up here. Always the largest number goes on the top of the bar diagram since that's the top of the mountain there. Okay, skip count by five. Five, 10, 15, 20. You pause it and finish that. 25, 30, 35. So seven times five is 35. Now, we can use the distributive property. Now again, with the fives, I doubt we would need to use the distributive property because we can count by fives. But let's take an easy problem that we know of seven times five and refresh our memory on how to use the distributive property. So if we have a harder problem, then we can remember how to do this uh, strategy to help us. So multiply seven times five. Again, same problem. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. So we have an array of seven groups of five. We can break seven groups of five into five groups of five and two groups of five. Break it down, add it up. So two groups of five is 10 and five groups of five, remember one whole hand is 25. Okay, and then we can add 10 plus 25 and get 35. And if we're using our cool parentheses here, seven groups of five, the five stayed the same, 
and we broke down the 7 into 2 and 5. So 10, 25, 10 plus 25 equals 35. Okay? On the back, show two different ways to find the product of 6 times 7. So I want you to pause that. You can use a bar diagram. Um, you can skip count, not very easy by 6s or 7, or you can use the distributive property and either break down the 6 or break down the 7. So pause it and go ahead and do that. Okay, so six groups of seven. You can choose to break down the six or the seven. I'm gonna break down the seven, since that's my larger of the number. And I'm gonna break that down into a five and a two, which means my six, this one gets a six, that one gets a six, everybody gets a six, big day on Oprah. Okay, six times five is 30, and six times two is 12, so 30 plus 12 is 42. Therefore, six times seven equals 42. We could have also done a bar diagram, okay? Six groups of seven. So if I make seven groups, I draw six lines. Two, three, four, five, six. Not perfectly even, but that's okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna put a six in each one. So I did seven groups of six, but you could easily have done six groups of seven. So let's see, we have, I know that six plus six is 12. And then I don't have another one for that, so that's gonna be six. So then I can do 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus six and add it up. Two, four, six, six plus six is 12. One, two, three, four, 42. Six times seven equals 42. So those are strategies you can use if